Hello everybody and welcome to the podcast number 22. Uh, today's guest is Samuel Quagliotto, sorry, Samuel Quagliotto. Uh, he is my first, let's say, big mentor in my career as an architect because he was my design uh, assistant in my third year of university in Rome. And yeah, it was super cool that he accepted my invitation. He is a PhD in architectural design. Uh, he has a deep knowledge in Nordic architecture. And he's also uh, the founder of this atelier, which is sort of a co-working uh, community called Atelier Quagliotto. Uh, and they make a lot of competitions. And they also won some, um, among other, Scuola Innovative for a school in the little town of Sora in close to Rome. So yeah, it was super awesome to to talk to him and I hope you will enjoy our conversation. Um, by the way, I want also to thank you because the LinkedIn page has reached 250 and something uh, people. So the community is growing, which I'm very thankful for. And yeah, keep supporting the podcast by following the social media like LinkedIn, The Creative Insider or um, Instagram at TCI Podcast or um, Facebook, The Creative Insider. So thank you very much and enjoy podcast number 22. The whole world stops just like that. Hello, Samuel. How are you doing? Hi, George. Fine, thanks. And you? You're the second Samuel on the podcast. The first Samuel was from uh, New Zealand, uh -huh. so the second one is from Italy. Wow. <laughs> so the two part of, of, of the world. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Oh, nice. So, uh, Samuel, uh, I know you personally, but we're doing this uh, this podcast online because currently you're in Italy, me in Germany. Uh -huh. But you can introduce yourself a little bit to the audience, uh, who you are. Yeah, sure. I am, I am an architect, an Italian architect, and uh, also a teaching assistant. So for this reason, uh, well, me and George, uh, we meet uh, in the university when he was a student and um, and also a phd i made a phd uh, in in italy about the uh, in danish architect kai otto fisker and um, before to be an architect i a surfer but now after the, st the starting of this career as architect i stop uh, any kind of sport <laughs> so uh, this is who i am how are you after the lockdown? Have you eaten a lot uh, during the lockdown? or? Uh, yes, I work a lot because um, uh, I made a, about a four competitions uh, with the atelier. Um, and uh, so I, I work as uh, normally. No, but I was asking you also if you have eaten a lot, like if you got fatter. <laughs> ah, sorry, <laughs> I, I understand the work. No, uh, no, 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 because I'm, um, otherwise I I start to to do more exercise and uh, start with my girlfriend to do yoga. I I, I find a sort of balance with the work and uh, with my with my job that before I I haven't. And you in your lock no your lockdown? Oh no, I have. It's been a mess. I haven't done so any sports. Uh, I've started again a little bit. Um, we're doing with some friends uh, something called Sober October. Uh -huh. So we don't drink and we don't eat junk food for the whole October month. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but the lockdown it's, it hasn't been helpful for me okay. and i still am working on finding this balance with uh work and sport and uh and um yoga okay. and uh, fitness in general but um yeah, i wanted to say you're also the the most uh, hipster architect i ever met really uh, yeah wow well, why well because of your bird it's so big and so fluffy <laughs> <laughs> but no one is, is in this moment of the podcast can see my bird. 
Uh, well, they nice. they will see it on the picture or on the or the drawing you will send me for your uh, podcast cover. Yeah, sure. So, okay. people, I suggest you to go on the Instagram of the podcast or in the Instagram of Samuel, and you'll find some amazing pictures of <laughs> this hipster bird. Okay. Uh, so, um, as as you said, you've been my uh, one of I think no the assistant in my second year of design I third the, year. Third, the third year no yeah the third year yes. the third year of design and uh, you've been sort of uh, you are very a big mentor and the students are very well, thank you. very uh, well um, they have very good feelings about you all the time in the university because you are uh, this uh, sort of a, a bridge between the students and the professor Uh -huh. And uh, you teach the student. I mean, at least when I was a student, you told me a lot of uh, things that usually the professors uh, don't say, like about uh, how to represent architecture, uh -huh. uh, where to find ideas, how to. And you're st you have a, a studio, which is an atelier, uh -huh. Atelier Qualiotto, which also have a very specific way of drawing architecture. So I think uh, that's a very. That was very cool uh, what I enjoyed uh, when I was a student of yours and also the way we related to each other. You're super friendly and super down to earth. Mm. So I thought it was interesting to have you now back on the podcast <laughs> after a few years. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, so, um, but let's start your story from the beginning because yes. I don't know, I don't know your story from the beginning when in your life did you decide that you wanted to be an, a creative uh, an architect or okay something in that way uh, i i think that i realized it uh, at, at the age of uh, 19 but uh, i have inside my soul uh, uh, from the beginning because when i was a kid i, I like to stay at home uh, not go to play football outside uh, I stay on my own, play in my room, stand in front of the fireplace uh, and smelling the, the shines that came from the kitchen while my parents or grandparents cooked. So uh, I felt that this was kind of a magic. I breathing a feeling of calm uh, and quiet and, uh, um, and believing the, of how uh, could be uh, an house uh, And that could be the domestic environment. Uh, um, so I grew up, and uh, uh, also at the age of six, uh, I started to get passionate about drawing. I started to copy the, any design, uh, any sorry, the Disney character from Goofy to Pluto to Mickey Mouse. Uh, and uh, so I, at the end, uh, I combine these two things. Uh, the um, Uh, the, the spirit that I listen inside the house and the, the passion for the for the drawing and um, at the end uh, I I roll up in the in the University of Architecture. So this, but, this uh, is the story. But what did you study before the University of Architecture? With kind of uh, high school? Uh, I scientifically assume. Uh, oh, okay, so like the scientific orientation. Yeah, and you, yeah. Uh, but I, I always drawing. I think I all my um, friends hate me because um, I continue always drawing on the desk on the desk board. And when I something some um, someone else uh, um, sit down on my desk, they completely. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so you vandalize uh, yes, all, all uh, the table yes, exactly. <laughs> with drawings, yes, with drawings of Disney characters, yes, course, everything. <laughs> exactly. Did you did you ever do like graffiti? Yes, graffiti uh, on, my, on my wall, not on on the wall of my vegetable garden, not in the city, because I fear of police or some or someone else. But in the vegetable garden of my own home, I. I always uh, do gra did graffiti, and it's very it's very nice. Were were your parents okay with that, or they were like whatever? Uh, not at all. But uh, <laughs> I convinced <laughs> them that, uh, or I can do this here, or I go out in the city. So <laughs> at the end, they say, "Okay, start here. I don't want police here." <laughs> 
<laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, I've never asked you that before, but how was your uh, impact to the university when you started studying architecture? Uh, was it the way you were imagining it or were you surprising somehow? Okay. Uh, at the start, I didn't want to go university because I want to have a job to, to earn money on my own and to have a home. But at the end, uh, thanks to uh, my parents and all my family, my relatives, uh, I start to, to the University of Architecture. And at the start, I, uh, it was boring because um, um, they, in the university in Roma and after in, the, in Udine, um, they give little space to the design workshop. And uh, there was few design courses uh, and are stifled by other uh, shines courses that keep uh, you away from focusing on design. Uh, I remember that in the first years of architecture studies, I made the mistake that, that most students do, to not study much the project of other architects of the past. Uh, I thought uh, wrongly that uh, the architect could design what he wanted as if he, he, he or she was an artist. And, but after, after, fortunately, uh, during my, this my five years of study, I met two professors, uh, Filippo Lambertucci, that you know, and uh, Orietta Lanzarini, who taught me the, the correct way to read architecture. Uh, it, this is very important. Uh, I think uh, a mentor or a professor um, have the, the rule to uh, teach how read architecture and not how make architecture because uh, um, every student has to understand uh, his or her path to make architecture. And this um, before they need to, to read, read a lot. So from these meetings, uh, uh, with these two professors, I started to read the books, spending money, perhaps too much, on all of those architecture books and the magazine, as Casabella or Domus magazine. And so at the end, I started to understand how to make a good architectural composition. So uh, uh, the, the, the start was boring and the end it was very nice. This. Yeah, I I agree with you, and I loved also the class where we met, where you were, were the assistant of uh, Lambertucci, mm -hmm. of the professor Filippo Lambertucci in Rome, because those. But what I I found very important in in him is also the way he approached students, mm -hmm. because he was the first professor in that university where I didn't feel. Like the professor is the god, the boss of the world, <laughs> okay. and I am the slave in the bottom of the ship. Yeah. Like it's uh, that's also really important. Uh, yes. And this was, sure. and 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 one lie, Filippo Lambertucci looks exactly like you in twenty yeah. years. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> by the by the way, how is yeah. his English? How is he English? We we can contact him for a podcast too. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, we, why not? Uh, why not? Yeah. Do you still have a close contact with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I listened today. For Oh, very cool. So, so if, if you want, he speaks English very well, probably better than me. Uh, so really? Yeah, sure. Uh, oh, let's have him. If I have him on the podcast, that would be so much fun. Yes, yes. I Why want not? to. Uh, it would be very, very nice and very enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you can ask him, and if he comes, he'll be the first professor. Wow. Uh, ever on the podcast. Wow, yes. I mean, he doesn't need to do much. He just needs to hit to sit uh, in his house for a couple of hours having a chat with me about architecture. It's not so bad. <laughs> wow. And um, But you have studied, so you have studied, uh, I don't know exactly. I know that you have studied a little bit in Udine. In uh, the no, University I of start in Roma, in Pomezia, that um, always uh, Sapienza. And mm -hmm. uh, and after the, after the bachelor, I I went in in Udine for the master degree. And okay. after uh, in two thousand twenty, uh, sorry, two thousand ten, 
uh, I come back in Roma and start uh, my PhD. Okay. Uh, and, um, and the then, other professor you mentioned, the... the, the, the Alandrini. Is she, is she in the University of uh, Udine? Udine or yes, is she, in, in uh, Udine. She was the historian, um, architecture historian uh, professor. Ah, okay. And um, how how was uh, how was the difference? Uh, what is the difference between studying in Rome and studying in Udine? Did you feel any difference in the two schools, or mm. were they very similar? And uh, I think that the the university uh, in that period is very was very similar. The the difference that I lived is the um, to live in a city more small. Uh, where um, uh, the to move uh, around city is more easy uh, you can go easily biking uh, everywhere uh, the so in in leave the city i, I find a place uh, more uh, a human scale rome is, is too big for me for my soul and uh, for this reason i'm not be in comfort my the, my comfort zone Uh, is not in Roma. I, uh, yeah, I agree with that. Rome is extremely chaotic. It's yes. too big and uh, um, too congested. Too many people, too many cars, mm -mm. and and it's too sm like. But in the same way, the the um, city net, the 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 buildings, the 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 city fabric, it's very dense. Mm -hmm. so there is no room <laughs> like, yes. it's big but there is no room it's a little strange um, but it, i mean it's a beautiful city of course it's one of the the, the city center especially it's amazing yes but it's, yes uh, sure very difficult to live in mm -mm, yes there is a lot of monuments there is a lot of um, historic place uh, but uh, for an architect you i think you should have also uh the past and the present to understand how these two communicate together and in rome i, I think you miss this uh, present this architect of the present yeah you, i mean you get a lot of the past but you don't get a lot of the present the present yes so, uh, just a little a little bit in some mm, sort of masterpieces that are not Uh, replicable, like yeah. I don't know, Maxi Museum is very famous, but I I don't think it's an an archetype. It's not uh, something that you can do more than once. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very unique. But I, if I, I lived in a, in another city also because during my PhD I was um, I lived in in Copenhagen, and uh, I uh, also Copenhagen is very uh, is interesting but um, has his its human scale it's big city there is a lot of people but you can also find uh, a, a balance between the past and the present uh, you can find uh, how the present uh, how sorry the, the, the present yes uh, it's related to the past and uh, how the present uh, upgrade the the archaic uh, form of the danish uh, past architecture so uh, I, copenhagen denmark uh, in, in this moment uh, uh, it, it's a beautiful place uh, where um, find a lot of inspiration also for this reason um, so i don't know if you ever see denmark copenhagen in real have you never visit No, not personally. I've never been there, but um, I did. Um, I don't know if you have ever seen my master thesis in architecture. No, um, but uh, mm, well, I, I can send you a link after the podcast. Yeah, you sure. can check it. Yeah, uh, I've tried to do something similar for the city of Frankfurt. Okay, because in the city of of Frankfurt, um, so I can tell you that briefly. Um, it during the Second World War, you know, there was La Revanche, so they wanted to destroy everything, okay. and they bombarded the city down to nothing. Everything was teared oh. down, and um, so Germany to have something, uh, to have at least something that's still historical, mm -hmm. they they 
rebuilt the the buildings as they were but they didn't rebuild the city center and they did something now a, a project project that was recently finished which is called um it's called it's funny name it's called the old new town and it's like um it's it has his uh, urbanistically speaking uh, works very well because you have these small streets and small uh, squares but um the architectural form it's a little like fake historic okay and uh, i've read the uh, the books of jan gel which mm. is the danish the danish urbanist yes. which are also called the uh, the human scale where he explains uh, the fi- the five minute city and different concept that he takes also a lot of uh, historical Italian cities. For example, he explains uh, not only the he he does something interesting in his book. He explains the relationship between the form of the city and how we use it as a human being. Okay. And um, and I tried it to do because they're de- doing currently they're building a big development. Um, big project next to the European Central Bank a new quartier mm-hmm. a new a new piece of city so i took that that part of the city and i did a different concept from what they're currently building which i took the old and tried to reshape it in a new way with the modern okay to make a modern livable city mm, so i i I've never been to Copenhagen. I wanted to do. I wanted. We were thinking to going in summer. Okay. But um, I think the Danish people didn't want us because oh. there was too much COVID here. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, I've I I was one. I was. I like a lot of uh, Danish architectural firms, so I was considering going in in Denmark to to try to work there okay but uh, so far it hasn't happened so but I, I have it on my, on top of my list okay so and, I, um, I want to yeah? just another an, an book uh, for the fact that you mentioned the young girl and I think you like the this book uh, there is a David Sim soft city. Uh, he worked this um, this architect called David Sim worked for um, for Young Gal, and uh, now he he wrote this book Soft City and tried to study the correct uh, form of the building uh, like your thesis uh, in the in, this, in a in a neighborhood the the proportion of the street related to uh, the the commercial space that uh, has in the ground floor or the importance uh, of the courtyard uh, in the building. So all these uh, small things that uh, permit to uh, draw a more enjoyable uh, neighborhood for all the people, for uh, small, young, old, elder, and also to, to mix this, to, to create a neighborhood uh, full of uh, function, not only uh, resident um, sleeping area, not only the kindergarten, but uh, all these function mixed together. So this book is very is very interesting, I, I think, in my opinion. Um, I think it's uh, basically, yeah, I, I've read the, all the books of Young Gael. I mean, I don't know if they're old, but the, the most famous one. And uh, after I've read them, I, I think it was, um, I like that book because it was uh, theory mm-hmm. and practice because it was really written in a clear language. And really, I, I let it uh, read to my, from my, my girlfriend read it and she's yeah. not an architect and she understood and she liked it. And, and you know, you can understand uh, why, for example, you like sitting in a certain area of your city or you like to avoid another one okay uh, you get more um, um, you have self uh, conscious about how you feel in the city so okay. it, it I, i like it but i'll a uh, soft city you said it's yeah. called it's not, soft city it's a uh, uh, it's not, i'll buy it i'll uh, buy it <laughs> not not by young girl but uh, david sim David Sim. Okay, yeah. so I'll, I I can tell you, you can do like a, 
you can be my book editor and yeah. we do an Instagram post a week with uh, your uh, book uh, tip. Wow. Because you, <laughs> you, you, and I always will write down suggested by Samuel Quagliotto. Yes. <laughs> well, I think, yeah. I think that uh, forms of uh, culture like architecture can, can use these new channels um, mm -hmm. to promote themselves. Yes. I've, I don't know if you have heard that um, Chiara Ferragni, which is the yeah, very famous sure. uh, famous um, influencer in Italy. Do you want she, uh, no, 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 she, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Okay. In a year, in a year, she's coming on the podcast. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> when she when she gets the second children, and then she is more famous, and she will come on the podcast. Yeah. No, um, but she went to the Uffizi and a lot of people started going to the Uffizi. Mm -hmm. and, but other people, I saw a lot of people that were hating because they were like uh, very hating her because they said how it's possible that now culture is based on Chiara Ferragni and stuff like that. To me, it's important that culture is spread somehow. Mm -hmm. So if it's on Instagram, the place to spread culture and it, if it make people read more and know more about some interesting stuff for me, it's okay. Yeah, it's it's a media. It's yeah. a media, and I and a lot of people don't look at the numbers. I saw how many interactions, which means how many people go and do something on the profile of Chiara Ferrani they are in Italy or in the world. And I saw which is the biggest newspaper in Italy and how and which is La Repubblica and how many people buy it a day or go on the website. And I think Chiara Ferran is like five times more. <laughs> so so I think that he, he, unfortunately old uh, media are a little smaller than single people sure. currently. So why not? Yeah. But um, back to back to your story. So you went to Denmark during your PhD yes. to do some, I guess, research. Um, did you stay there at the university or how was it? In, in Copenhagen, sorry. Yeah, and when you went to Copenhagen, did you go on your own and stay there for six months? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I went for six, seven months uh, during my PhD. To, to gather material about uh, the, the architect uh, for the thesis. And um, so uh, I didn't uh, the, I didn't uh, have Erasmus or exchange. This is only my um, experience uh, outside the, the, the Italy. And how, how was uh, living in Copenhagen for six months? Wow, it's beautiful. I lived there in the... Um, in the winter period, so from October to to April, and um, the, the weather it's uh, was always always more or less uh, gray. Uh, the sunrise uh, it's at eight, and the sunset is uh, uh, at uh, three p.m. But the uh, it it's very uh, interesting how. Uh, move this to the city how leave the city you can uh, go in a neighborhood uh, you can find uh, all the uh, facilities you need uh, you don't need to go in the city center to live uh, a enjoyable day uh, with your friends uh, you can stay also at the step store of the your home and on in your courtyard with your friends uh, to to read a book, so it, it's very it's um, permit me to to understand uh, a different way a different way to to leave the city, and uh, also because uh, um, it permit me to, living in a in a nation outside your your own opens your mind uh, even more because it is not like uh, taking a trip. Uh, I think living in another place is uh, try to understand also the other culture and trying to establish it, uh, a relationship with it in a critical way. And so this allows you to also to grow up as, uh, as a human being, first of all. Um, so this is very um, 
for me, it was very important to live outside Italy and live in specifically in, the, in, in Copenhagen. And also, I know that you move away from Italy, you live in Frankfurt. So how is your, your experience about it? Uh, well, um, when I came here, Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of things were a little new for me. I needed to get used to it. Um, like uh, people are, I, I think people in the core are the same, but outside in the, the shells are a little different. Uh, so when I arrived here, I needed to get used to the local culture mm -hmm. because it's uh, quite different than the Italian one. Um, and, um, but I, I, I now work with people from everywhere, from China, from Iran, from, uh, Poland, from every, uh, where, where, um, I was talking to some from Egypt, Whoa. from, from Germany, from everywhere. And um, I think uh, that uh, that's important for mo for the humanity to have contact with other cultures, so we understand each other better, and we we get to know that uh, there are no bad and no good nations, old cultures. There are good people and bad people, no matter where they're from. And I think this will be helpful not only on a layer for. Uh, for architecture, but also on the social layer. Mm -hmm, yeah. Be because here I got to learn people uh, from very, for example, like in summer one night I was out with my, my girlfriend. She's uh, partly American and with my colleague, uh, he's from Iran. And it was so funny because, you know, those two countries are, very, there are a lot of tensions Mm -hmm. between the countries but we were out together and having fun and nobody you know it's, it's so weird because people get to think it's about teams and cultures and i want to defend my my culture which is also my team but uh, but uh no it's everybody are there are nice people and bad people everywhere but not every people from one culture or the other are good or bad Uh -huh. The only experience I've had with Denmark is when I arrived here was Erasmus. Uh -huh. There were a um, couple of students from, they were, I, they weren't architecture students, but they were from, from, from Denmark. And uh, I, I have to say very, also very different culture than Italians, but uh, they were fun. They were, they were very friendly also, very friendly and very shy. Uh, I think that, Uh, the Scandinavian uh, nations, um, from the Italian idea that they are shy, they are cool people. But in reality, I I read I read a book that uh, called Lagom. It's not architectural book, but it's a, a book, um, and it's the philosophy behind the Sweden people, the Swedish people, and uh, when they live. Uh, Uh, with each other, they are not shy. This kind of coolness, coolness that we read when they uh, don't talk with you that you are a foreigner, um, it's not shyness. It's uh, a form of respect from the other. So uh, I think that uh, we always see ah, Scandinavian people are cool. No, it's not cool. It's uh, it's. Mm, their way to respect you it's completely different point view of you yeah yeah for example when i arrived here oh. uh we we got like a one uh, we get a folder with uh, the documents uh, not um, like mm, some brochures um about uh, living in frankfurt and living in germany from the university and we had like um One paper, A4, with some cultural behaviors in Germany to explain the foreigners why these things are so important in Germany. And uh, everybody knows that Germans are a lot, like they're very on time. They're never late. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want to know why it's so important to be on time in Germany? No, I don't know. 
because um, the belief, like the culture says that if me and you have a meeting and I'm late and you wait for me, I co- I'm very, I'm very unpolite because I'm very rude because I consider my time more important than your time. Yeah. So it's important to be on time and a sign of respect for the other person so that you show that your time is not more important than uh, the time of, of the other person who's waiting for you. Wow. And uh, I, I mean, if you see it this way, I think it's very correct and very nice. And, uh, you know, this is why you need to go through the prejudice uh, sometimes. because you, you need to understand, I think, what I said before. When you live in another nation, you need to you need to also um, understand the culture in a critical view. This is the reason you can understand the the other, not all, all only you and what you uh, are and what you uh, your culture is, but also the other. And in this way, you you can reach the, the perfection. You can reach the um, everything you need to to stay uh, well with uh, in 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 every place you are or will be. Yeah, of course, uh, that's that's a good point of view. Uh, and um, I wanted to ask you because I I know you've been uh, since the first time we kind of, I mean, not the first time I, we met, but the first year when I was in the class of the professor Lambertucci, uh, and you were doing our, you were our assistant, you already have done the competition about the port of, uh, Helsinki or somewhere in Finland. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, since then I could notice that you were very, you showed us the images of Mir, which are from Norway. Wow. Um, so uh, I was uh, since there, then I, I thought, okay, uh, Samuel is very interested in the Scandinavian uh, world. And uh, I always looked at the many I, I found through this um, passion of yours. Mm-hmm. I developed my own passion about the Scandinavian world. And now I know a lot of offices, a lot of architects from Sweden, from from Denmark, uh, from Norway. And um, I was uh, thinking, I wanted to ask you why you were so passionate. But you were also very passionate about some uh, architects, Italian architects from the 60s, 70s. And uh, yeah, I was one, wondering how did you develop these two passions for the Scandinavian world, and then uh, this certain Italian architect. Okay, for, from the Scandinavian world, I think it's um, start uh, from the um, from the beginning of the university because at the beginning uh, it was uh, two thousand seven. I, I was very bored by the architecture uh, that the professor showed us that show above all the works the works of Le Corbusier, who in his undisputed contribution to architecture, I actually saw cold, cold place without human warmth. And Frank Lloyd Wright, I admired the, the material qualities of the buildings he built. However, I considered the, the compositions too complex and perhaps too articulated. And at the end, it was only in Alvaralto that I felt the ineffable affinities with. That was my first real contact with and the approach to, to the Scandinavian architecture. Uh, Alvaralto's building in plan elevations and the use of materials are a very simple but uh, refined, um, elegant. They, they are functional, but at the same time not called uh, as Le Corbusier. And their build, his build building um, permit to to create a wide range of uh, possibilities for the inhabitant to experience the same place in in a different way. Uh, a window ca- became a, um, a bench to sit and to walk outside, for example. So, um, uh, in addition, also Alvaralto, uh, 
I, from Alvar Alto, I understand at the look, uh, at the quality of uh, the furnishing, like uh, armchair, like lamp. Uh, and so uh, gradually, from Alvar Alto, I also discovered the Scandinavian architecture. And uh, I think now I'm completely in love with uh, Denmark. Uh, but not only the present, I think that the best uh, uh, lesson that you can uh, uh, take from Denmark uh, came from the architecture of the 19th century uh, until from the, the, the start of 19 uh, from until the, the 1970 more or less and uh, the other question sorry was uh, uh, no, because uh, Frau, because you're very passionate also about Italian architects, but they're not like um, modern Italian architects or it specific Italian architects from, I think, the 60s, 70s, which were building uh, um, sometimes also um, what are called sub-conventioned uh, housing Mm -hmm. uh, which you meticulously have researched and have you read and you know about them and and you go on on the on the place and check the um, check in person their works. Uh, so I was wondering how did you uh, develop the knowledge about those architects and the passion about those architects? Uh, also through your two big professors which were your guidance or how that happened uh, i think because uh i think that the architect that you would mention was uh, uh, giancarlo de gallo that i show you uh, i think you have done a whole research about uh, the residences they made in in rome and i think not only in rome uh, yes in fact uh, giancarlo de gallo is in terni and I, after I discovered that uh, the building, this residential complex, uh, is a, a research that he um, put out uh, thanks to the research that he take from Scandinavian and also from other Scandinavian uh, world. So I think that this my unconscious um, um, love for. Uh, this period of Italian is because uh, uh, they came from the Scandinavian architecture. I think I don't know. <laughs> I see, um, but um, yeah, I think you have this. Uh, I want to tell you something that you probably won't like, <laughs> but uh, I remember we had a chat a couple of years ago, and you told me you don't like uh, Bjork Engels. Yes, I. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you. I think you don't like his architecture, probably. But um, I, 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 I like, I like uh, his concepts and his ideas. Uh, not everything. I think that uh, it's currently becoming a little bit more brand. I mean, still very interesting ideas, but also a little bit, you know, like uh, star architecture. Um, but there is one interview which uh, he explains uh, how he was studying in Denmark and that he would be something like a, an investigative journalist about architecture. He would go to the library with uh, some friends he had back then and they would uh, find one name in some book, some architect they found interesting. And then they find uh, more information uh, in different magazines and different... So I, I think when you look at his background he's done something very very similar to you so i think that in fact in the way of approaching your uh, own education and study architecture it's very very similar as as him <laughs> but <laughs> then the the result is different but yes. the 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 approach is uh, very 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 similar yes um i i am i remember that i say that uh, i don't don't like uh, bjark but I th there is two projects that is very interesting, and uh, I can say nothing on the project for the uh, waste to energy uh, with the sky slope on the on the on the roof, and it's wonderful. 
I think it's a masterpiece for the architecture of today. And yeah, yeah. And it, I like also the one in New York, the Via 57, if you uh, know that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. The pyramid. Yes, yes. Now also, it, also its project is very, very, very interesting. And also the, the last one that I love it, it's the, the new restaurant of Nama 2.0. It's like a small village. And when I see this project, I say, no, it's impossible. It's not Bjark because it's very Danish. And when you see the project of Bjark, you can, you, you don't see, say, this is Danish architecture. Uh, when you see Noma 2.0, you say, wow, it's very, it's, it's a, an upgrade of the Danish architecture. So uh, when I see it, it's very, I say, wow. Very nice, very interesting how uh, um, he put together the element, the composed, the, 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 all the elements, all the small house, and also in the uh, use of the material, the quality of the material. So, uh, yeah, Bjark. Well, what I appreciate of him is that he, he says he, hasn't, uh, he has no style officially. For example, like other architects like Zaha Hadid or uh, Liebeskind or, um, I mean, every Renzo Piano even, they all have a certain style. Yes. And uh, I think right. he explicitly say he has no style. He has like uh, architecture that's the result of uh, the concept of the best solution for, for that project. And uh, I think this is why he can uh, afford to make uh, a restaurant which is very typical Danish and then do all the rest of crazy stuff. He And he currently, they released some images about his project for the moon city. So <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the style of Bjark is the diagram. The, the... Yeah, the diagrams have a style, but the projects and the buildings are so different. Yes. I mean, I like also the the bridge they the bridge museum they did now in Norway. Yes. It's also it's crazy. crazy. It's the crazy. factory in Switzerland, which is uh, standing on the glass. I mean, there's so many. Uh, I don't like all the projects he does, but I like the spirit of of mm. the, the the office. The curiosity that permit to to reach this kind of project. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like we that. Did, um, the panda the panda house in the Copenhagen Zoo. Ah, uh, yeah, I saw that one too. They they built that so quickly. Yes, I think in Denmark uh, build uh, everything so quickly. And well, we in Germany too. In uh, Germany okay. too, they are building very very you wait, very quickly. Uh, your children grow up, and after probably something. <laughs> I have I have one building which is ready. No, two, two. Wow. Okay. Two buildings. Uh, on one I work very little, and the other one was a refurbishment, but a complete refurbishment. Okay. So two buildings uh, in my young age. It's already, it's already okay. <laughs> I can walk by and say I did that. <laughs> wow! It's super. Yeah, it's very nice. It's very nice. Uh, I, I think I've told that on the podcast that I love very much to go on the construction place because you go and you see what you have designed being built and it's a very beautiful emotion. I, I, I hate this, uh, the construction site for only well reason because uh, I, I hate to, to, don't, to, to see the other do something and not me in my person. So I, I hate the, the, this kind of place. I would like to, to take a brick and uh, build the, the wall or uh, take the hammer to build a wall with the hood done, with the timber. But I hate to, to see other uh, do something during uh, you stay stand up and with your hand in the, in the jacket. Oh, yeah. well, but we have always been on the construction place actually doing something. So we would go to take some measurements or to um, to check some point of the building because it was an existing building. Mm -hmm. So it was very complicated because we didn't have a perfect relief of the existing building. Okay. And the, the plans we gotten from the client were different from what actually was built. 
And uh, so we needed to quickly change our project in some points. And then I would go to the construction place to check some measurements of some exact point. Okay. And that's why um, I just saw passing by what they have already built. Okay. And it was beautiful to see how they have built what, something that I have uh, taught from the first moment of the... Because in this project, I did all everything. You know, I started from the concept to the finished building. So it was very, very beautiful. Yes, sure. You see all the life of the project, the the whole life of the project. Exactly, all, everything. And, um, um, but let's talk, because we have talked about a lot about your academic side, which, uh, I mean, if we, we, if we keep talking about, uh, I mean, your PhD in architecture, so, We could talk in a theoretical way about architecture with you for hours, and I'm sure you will have a lot of uh, good points and interesting views. Uh, as I said, if, you, if you're interested, you can be some uh, sort of curator for some book tips about architecture, um, the podcast. But um, I was also willing to talk to, with you about your Atelier Quagliotto, <laughs> atelier Quayotto. Uh, uh, sì. First of all, why, why you call it atelier? Why atelier? Exactly, why atelier? Why atelier? Because uh, atelier is more um, cold than studio. Uh, no, uh, because when I hear the word studio, uh, it reminds me a studio of uh, a lawyer or an accountant or uh, a doctor. So studio reminds me a place uh, uh, where a profession is carried out with uh, a commercial purpose, uh, therefore a service in exchange for money. Uh, the sound of the word atelier, on the other hand, reminds me the image of a, a place where the profession is uh, carried out trying to, to improve himself, like a painter uh, that try to, to prove a, um, a paint. So where some certainties are questioned to verify, to, to verify them or not, and with the intention of uh, proposing something that is the result of a research. I know that uh, in, in the end, the, the aim is always to offer a project in exchange for money. But uh, the term of atelier i wanted to, to create the atmosphere of uh, a place where people exchange ideas, draw and think critically, and therefore work in a stimulating environment for the growth of thought. So uh, I, 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 I'm in my, I, in my uh, mind, uh, this place where people came uh, entrance and the, the pavement is completely in the in timber, in plank, hood plank. You can listen the the, the, the shows that make sound and um, you can talk with each other and you can uh, try to, to investigate a form if it's correct, or if or not. Uh, yeah, there is no computer, but in the end, you, yes, we use computer. Um, and studio for me, it's like a like for engineering studio. So this is this, the difference. And um, how long ago did you start with this atelier in the form it's today? Because from what I understood, um, atelier and Quagliotto, it's like Quagliotto, it's your last name. So it, you're the sort of the, 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 the magnet that uh, keeps the pieces together. And then there are some other people which also can be seen on the podcast on the on the website of your of your uh, atelier, which I will just of course uh, put in the description of the podcast, so everybody who listen can go just scroll down and click on the link. Mm, so you design currently um, most of your ideas, and then you have this team which uh, supports you in uh, creating the. Uh, The, the documents needed for the competitions you are taking part of, right? Mm -hmm. uh, until now, 
uh, yes, because um, the, the team is composed uh, about uh, five girls, uh, and um, until July they they were uh, students, but now they are architects. So I I ask them if they they want uh, work in in a non hierarchic way, in the sense that um, uh, everyone could say what you uh, what um, uh, what they want what they can draw and the idea and after we we talk with each other and uh, try to to balance all the idea in in one uh, project so uh, in in this moment atelier coyote is a work in progress to to change the vision this is not uh, uh, only me now, but also other architects. There is also um, my my girlfriend that is an interior designer, and uh, so now, in fact, we are uh, competing in uh, in two project uh, in two competition. One in a church in uh, in Sicily, and uh, one a museum in um, in Finland in Tampere, and. Uh, for the museum, uh, we organize this uh, um, this organization where uh, everyone uh, try to sketch uh, uh, something, try to compose uh, the the idea, and uh, next week we we see to to talk about it and to 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 work uh, to to balance all the idea. So this is now Atelier Coyote. It's it's completely changed uh, from when it started in 2014, when uh, there was uh, there were my idea and uh, the other helped me to to draw uh, my idea. But also uh, I try to I always try to listen the suggestions of the other. I, I never say no. This is my idea. Uh, you can say anything. Uh, this is not my behavior and and uh, but I was also okay so this is the the general organization that you are trying to change now in a, a more democratic way let's yeah. say so um, if you haven't listened um, to the podcast there was an episode a few months ago mm -hmm. where I have a chat with um uh, this lad, he's from, he's originally from uh, Albania, then he grew up in Greenland mm -hmm. and um, he worked for uh, OMA. Mm -hmm. and then he has his own studio uh, in, uh, um, it's called uh, Architects for Urbanity. Okay. It's Irgen Salianji. It was the podcast number 13. And he has also done a lot of competitions and he won um, the competition for the library in Varna in Bulgaria. Okay. And uh, then he, he, he did get the assignment to build it. And from there, the office started officially as our architects uh, for urbanity. And he was explaining in that episode also, it was a very beautiful episode because it was specifically for architecture was very good because we have... Uh, you can see this guy was very passionate about architecture and he is, um, yeah, we were talking exactly about the approach of architecture and uh, competitions. Mm -hmm. And they started also a team of five in a very democratic way. And also they had the background of, uh, they have worked for uh, OMA, for Meccano. So of course they had also uh, the experience. Um gathered from somebody that's from an office that's already successful. Um, and I was thinking how it works, uh, the organization in general at Atelier Qualiotto for the competitions, because um, from what I understood, also Atelier Qualiotto is currently not your only work. So you have a, a job and then you do Atelier Qualiotto on the side. And I was wondering how you work with the team that everything is done on time. Uh, how do you manage the, if you have always extra hours, uh, how do you organize yourself? How much time uh, there is between uh, from the moment when you decide you want to take part in the competition 
to handing the competition, yeah, stuff like that. So, how what, what is the process? Like, you can talk a lot about the process. Okay, the the the, 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 sorry, the process is um, we as you say, I have a double job. So, um, I my organization with with the other is uh, always in the weekend. We work uh, during the weekend. Uh, we like a smart working we don't see uh, real but um, everyone stay in his home and uh, we work uh, uh, at home and um, so uh, this is the the the, 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 the organization and um, sorry I, I lost some some points so I can... no yeah no it was uh, because I was not told. for example you work in did you work in smart work also before the pandemic or uh... Uh, no during the pandemic uh, I, I started to, leave, to work in in August so I I work normally in the studio and no I mean like with your team at Atelier Quagliotto are they all from Latina so you meet in no, no, we, um, uh, also the during the lockdown we see with the uh, in smart working. Um, but yeah, and my question was before the pandemic when there was no virus. Okay, sir. Did, did you do still already smart working or before the lockdown? We we work uh, together. You know, in a room, in a room. They they are only they are all uh, in Roma. So we we meet in in a room and we work together. Oh, okay. Very better than work. Uh, uh, in smart working because uh, it's more uh, suggestive more uh, there is a lot of uh, idea that came through and uh, and also it's more easily the um, the to, communication to, to, yeah to sketch something it's more direct uh, yeah yeah so, i mean for architecture it's very difficult to do it and um, we call it here in germany home office okay uh, I don't know. In in um, in Austria, they call it mobile working. Okay. So every every country has developed uh, different <laughs> terms. Yeah, it's um, more uh, comfortable smart working because if you need to work, if you reach the the, the workplace um, and you spend one hour, one half an hour to to go and half an hour to to come back, it's two hour per day. That you travel, so smart working in in a way it's very uh, comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, but I, we avoid it here as architects uh, really? because it's um, very difficult. Yes, and um, I was think because now you have time on the. So you, do you manage to do also something during the week or only on the weekends? Unfortunately, during the week, no. I, mm -hmm. I completely uh, full of the work where I uh, of the company where I work, and uh, so I work in the weekend, and it's very tiring. It's very sometimes also frustrating because. Uh, the the only uh, thing that you, that I love to do is uh, drawing, do architecture in the company where I work now. It's uh, not uh, more designing or something else. It's more uh, coordination from uh, from other um, designer. Um, so uh, during the weekend. It's the only time that I have to do something that I love, uh, but at the same time it's tiring because you continue to stay uh, in front of your PC and uh, it, you don't you don't have time to to have a work uh, in a in a hoods or uh, to go out uh, to, the, to the seaside. Uh, so I, I don't know how how long is this uh, this um, this life. Uh, uh, this way to 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 work. Yeah, how much, how long it's gonna be possible to do yeah. this? Yes. Yeah, that's what I was uh, wondering because uh, I mean, doing a competition is stressful because uh, you need to do a big project in a short time. And how many hours you do on the weekend? All day, like a lot, or you manage to take 
at least half a day free or not at all? How it works currently? Uh, I usually try to, to work uh, halfway, half day. So the time I can spend the other time in, to, with my girlfriend. But uh, in the last two or three weeks, I work all day uh, because uh, we, we, we gather um, the information for all the of two competition. So it, it's, uh, it's more full time. Mm, I see. And, uh, but luckily, you and your girlfriend, you work together, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, we work together. And uh, I, I always uh, imagine to, to find a girl with uh, work together. And, uh, and fortunately, I find her. It's called Martina. And um, it's very interesting because you can uh, listen in a... She is not a colleague. She's your girlfriend. So when she says something, it's different uh, than uh, a colleague say you, uh, this project uh, don't function as well. So you, you can, uh, you understand, you listen more deep what they, what she say. Uh, I, I don't know your behavior with your girlfriend when they, she say something you about your job uh, or, or something else but uh, i think uh, um well my girlfriend she has helped me a lot with this podcast okay and i have listened to a lot of her advices about the podcast because the podcast is um she's a brand strategies brand strategy strategist sorry okay. and um it's you know when you say this brand strategist people think it's just you know Lulala, nothing concrete. Like nothing... What? What like uh, what uh, Chiara Ferragni? The yeah, no, no, nothing behind it, but it's a lot behind it. It's like um, creating a podcast or creating a company. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, you create this external, uh, let's, it's like making a person. Uh, you know, it's like you have to make the body of the person, you have to make the character of the person, you have to make the way of talking of the person. So uh, in creating, I mean, as you created Atelier Qualiotto also, for example, Atelier Qualiotto is also a brand. If you go on the website, if you go, if you read what is written on the website, the pictures, the way you do architecture, it's it's its own character right so it's yeah. it's and um you know she helped me build the character of this podcast in which in she helped me through talking with me she created some sort of um she created tables she created some powerpoint documents for me yeah. so that i can create uh what i need to do and how i need to do it to make the podcast be the way it is. Okay. So, of course, and I always listen to, we always talk to each other because uh, I, I'm i thinking about doing something similar, similar it, like you, like doing some competitions next to, to my full-time job. Mm -hmm. But um, I see that um, it's very uh, intensive. So, and I have, let's say, the disadvantage that I cannot work on a pro competition with my girlfriend. So, which means that I won't be spending no time with my girlfriend if I do competitions yeah, all, all, all the time. So, and if I will keep doing this podcast, also I need to do the podcast. Yes. Um, so, it's also a work to do a podcast because you need to f find the guest, uh, organize with the guest. Uh, prepare for the guest. Uh, it's a bunch of work. I mean, I it's mean. not. It's not just talking. Uh, talk, and, and then you have to take the time to sit, to talk, to record, to edit the, the episode, to do the you know, social media content. It's, uh, it's intensive. <laughs> I, I can imagine because I when you say oh, okay, it's a post podcast. Okay. Record the perfect file. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah. For for all the people who think who, who look me from from the side, it's uh, oh, whatever. He 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 records something, puts it on, but it's uh, uh, not that easy because I need to 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 record it, to edit it, to think about the title. When he, the all the guests send me the pictures, I need to sit, edit, put them together, think about the text, and. Uh, and then prepare with the next one. <laughs> but I think when, when you have a, a fire within you, inside your, your soul, this pushes you to do this kind of job. And this uh, permits you also to, to grow up as a person because you are um, feed your, your soul, your imagination, your curiosity, so you you grow up also not all this is not a job this is a way to grow up you i don't know probably from in two years your podcast is the top uh, in the top list of uh, architecture podcast i don't know well my podcast is not about architecture it's about combining uh, my 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 podcast is uh, the podcast, whoever listened to the podcast, is uh, for showing the stories behind the different interesting creative people. Okay. Uh, I, sometimes I know them personally. Sometimes I don't know them personally. But uh, the moment I started the podcast, I imagined that when I started studying architecture and I found myself in a very difficult situation um, personally with you know, because it's so uncertain, as you, you probably felt it too. You study, and in Italy especially, you see there are not very good economical condition, mm -hmm. and you don't know if what you're doing it's worth it. You don't know if you're gonna ever be able to practice what you're studying. And um, I want to talk with people who have find some way to do their creativity so that people who are listening who are starting now to think about becoming creatives or people for example like me that are working a job and they want to transition in something more personal so that they can feel not less lonely you know that they're not the only one there are a lot of people yeah. Yeah. in the same in the same situation and uh I think that just hearing the story in as we as I do it in the podcast is very not uh, so you know you can read a newspaper for example you can read a magazine about architecture but what you get in that interview about the architect it's you know how you did the project blah 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 it's very you know only about that but they don't see the behind the scenes okay so, so I want to show a little bit the backstage of every person that it's coming on the podcast okay interesting nice so so uh, and it's not only because i i call it the creative insider because uh if we talk only about i mean architect every creative field is not very different than architecture <laughs> so if you're a graphic designer the way they design the graphic design is very similar to how we design buildings or Movies, the way they think the movie, it's very similar to how we think the buildings, just in different, different ingredients, as you said, different. Mm -mm. Yes, different point of view. And I think it's also the way to for the different creatives that listen to the podcast to see what are their analogies and differences. So if you listen a podcast, for example, I had from Finland, uh, I had a person and she came to Frankfurt, Sara Katra. She makes uh, ceramics. Yes. Very beautiful ceramics. I see her in the, you know, Instagram. Yeah. After and her, if, you, uh, if you hear her story, it's very, very similar to architecture, just about ceramics. And, and she studied at the Alvar Alto University. So. Okay. Wow. So it's, it's cool. And I, I got to meet a lot of people. I mean, I got to talk with people like you that I know. But, you know, we, we know each other, but we haven't talked in a while. And when you sit two hours with somebody to talk about these things, you know better each other too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I never had the time to ask you somewhere, what have you studied? Why have you studied it? You know, okay. you, you don't have the time to get to know everybody so deep. But so, only one thing. I, I want to ask you why um, uh, 
uh, why you started this this podcast this is my question oh Please. why yes. because because i like to listen to podcasts myself mm -hmm. and i was listening to this podcast from this guy it's called uh, matt davella he he he's the he's a Originally, he's from Italy, and he did the documentary on in, on Netflix called uh, Minimalism. Okay. And he did a podcast. It's called The Ground Up Show. And he did 100 episodes, which are similar to this podcast, where he talks with different people who started a business. Uh, so it was more about small business of young people. And then his podcast became – he doesn't do it anymore – He, I think he does it, but only if you pay, you know, he need to pay, you need to pay to listen to the new episode. And I was like a little sad because I couldn't keep listening to this podcast. Okay. And I listened a lot of other podcasts and I said, well, you know what? I like to listen to podcasts. Let's do one podcast that I will do in the exact way I would like a podcast to be. And and I want to do it in Europe with I mean in with European guests mainly or with everywhere, but the podcast is European because I'm in Europe and it's gonna be in English because from the thing we were talking before, because so if I have done it in Italian, I could have only talked to people who talk Italian and only people who talk Italian could have listened to the podcast. Yeah, sure. But I wanted to do it in English and no matter how good is everyone's english also my english is not perfect but so that if a spanish guy wants to listen to this podcast and hear about atelier Qualiotto in latina can listen it and also if somebody in latina want to hear about sara catra which is in berlin can listen it so that we start more the dialogue between the different cultures so this was the main idea why i wanted to do the podcast okay And also because I like to talk to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know in English how is chiacchierone. Do you? Yeah, I, uh, well, chiacchierone means somebody that talks a lot. Uh, yeah, but then there is no terms that explain this, uh, this our. Way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Big, big mouth. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. <laughs> I remember no. the university. Yeah. Yeah, to university, but that created me a lot of connection. Yeah, sure. So yeah. I can I can interview my former assistants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, but yeah, in the so you are doing these two competitions now. Back to our <laughs> dialogue because we went a little out of um, no, not out of topic. We were chatting. It's good. Um, and so this is your new setup in in Atelier Quagliotto. So you work basically every time. <laughs> yes. Also in this moment, talking with you, it's it's work. I'm talking about Atelier Quayotto. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's good. Um, so that Atelier, I mean, my podcast, you know what is the best part of the podcast is that uh, it's not a live show. So maybe now the podcast has a certain popularity. But as you said, maybe in two years it will be very famous and you would have been on this podcast and yeah. people will, will listen to it. And they will go in the future and see the website and we see what is going on. Yes. Um, but I wanted to, to ask you um, so uh, also about the process. Uh, how do you manage to... So do you work all together? Do you have this now team which is sort of uh, together since uh, some time? Do you all, all work on the same software? How do you split your the the different um, tasks? How do you share the files? Do you have like a Dropbox or something? How do you do it? Yeah, we use um, a Google Drive. We put all the, 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 the file there and... Um, Um, in this moment, uh, we, we change software because uh, before we, we uh, was, uh, use our AutoCAD and Rhino uh, using the Cinema with Vray for the render. But now with the, the new software, the Beam software, we need to, to upgrade uh, this, uh, this change. Uh, so we use uh, Archicad because 
uh, we use uh, Mac software, Mac uh, hardware, uh, so Revit don't function as well. So we use ArchiCAD and um, we split this. Um, we don't at all work uh, on ArchiCAD. So there is me and another girl that work on the ArchiCAD after we um, take from take out from the, the model the, the DVG of the plan, section, elevation, or isometric view, and, uh, and the other um, complete uh, this, uh, this drawing uh, with Arc AutoCAD or Photoshop. Uh, so this is this, our, uh, our organization in, uh, with software. And um, do you have also a whole system about how to uh, organize the project files? Because, uh, for example, when I was a student, it was all chaotic. <laughs> uh, no, we we are uh, a domestic studio, our atelier. We are not so big, so uh, not so organized. Yes, we we are Google Drive for us. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect. And um, so all to get, when you work all together, is it still easier, I mean, faster to do it? Because you said you work all the weekend, but as you are so many people, do you ever do also uh, night shifts or that's... Mm... No, no. The, the, the rule is not, not night shift. Ah, so, okay. No. So yeah. you're very disciplined, you work very... Yeah. This is my rule from the university. I don't want to work uh, in the night. I want to work uh, only during the, the day uh, and f- until the 7, 8, after stop. You, your mind needs to, to relax, to breathe. You need to, to see other things. Uh, you need to, to do sport, to do something that uh, uh, reconnect uh, with your body also. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah, and, and do you, how, uh, what time in the morning you start working? Uh, if I work at home, I start to work at eight uh, in the morning. Uh, and if I work in a room for this company, I start at nine, but I wake up at six because I need to take the train and uh, so t- for the travel. Oh, yeah. And uh, how is now the situation with traveling and COVID? Do you think you're going to go back to smart working soon? or At the moment, uh, we work in the office, but uh, now I am in quarantine because uh, one of my colleagues uh, is positive at the test. Uh, so I'm in, uh, in, in quarantine. And uh, after this quarantine, I don't know, I hope to, to continue to work in smart working because I, I have just a little fear uh, for the... Um, to take all day, all the morning, the train, all the evening, the train, uh, to stay uh, in contact with the other people. Uh, I, I don't know the situation. It's not so so good. Uh, it's um, also if I um, go to my to the house of my parents, uh, I have fear to transmit them the COVID, and uh, if I don't know uh, to have COVID. Uh, uh, it's easy and uh, it's very dangerous at the moment. Yeah, I understand your situation. This is also one of the reasons I'm not sure yet to come back to Italy in the end of October. Okay. Um, and now I was checking through your website and through all the projects you have done. Uh, how many competitions have you won so far? One... Uh, Three one three competition. The um, the first one uh, was uh, a pavilion built in straw in um, uh, in Venice was the, the the competition the organizer and but uh, it never realized and uh, the, the organizer never paid me so it's very nice and uh, the other one is a pavilion for a Christmas market in Aosta in north of Italy and um, it's very interesting because um, i uh, i i'll be i i was there in the moment the craftsman um, realized this pavilion and so I, I, as you say before you can say 
you can see sorry the um, the moment uh, when your idea became uh, real it, it was superb this moment and uh, because the render the drawing the, the, don't uh, explain at all uh, an, an, an image that you have in mind and uh, the other competition it's more big it's um, uh, our school in Sora it's a city close in, in Lazio uh, and um, but um, he, he didn't realize and um, I'm so sad that uh, this school uh, didn't realize because I think that uh, um, this uh, should be uh, a possibility to me for me to, to start real my my studio my atelier um, but so, why didn't they uh, wanted to realize the school because i tell me more about because i i, I was super happy for you when i saw you won the the competition because it's uh i think it's a series of competition because it's called scuola innovativa and there were many many schools right yes it's in it was it were 50 T1 school all around in Italy, and uh, at the moment, no school in this moment uh, is realized. Uh, I, I don't know the problem with the Muir um, uh, that uh, has not the, 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 ah, uh, the possibility, the regulation that to permit you to realize the school. So I, I don't know why in this moment it's this, this competition was in uh, 2017 and now no no one participant no one architect work on the design project or in the executive project mm. so it's I saw that even Renzo Piano won one <laughs> of the schools right yes it no it's not uh, Renzo, Renzo Piano has um, uh, organized these uh, people that um, the st new students, uh, uh, new degree students that um, uh, work on a project every year. And oh, uh, yeah. uh, one year they organize a team of, uh, of students that work for this school in the same city where I won the competition. And the media, the mass media, use the terms Scuola Innovativa also to promote the project of Renzo Piano. So for me, it was only also uh, um, a demotivation because I say, no, wow, why also Renzo Piano? Yeah, I was also confused. And I, I was like, probably Renzo Piano won another of the schools and um, someone won another one. Because yes. it was very, very weird. Yes, exactly. But Renzo Piano didn't won a competition in Sora. He uh, project, he designed a, a, a school in Sora without any competition directly. Well, well of so course, he's, he's Renzo Piano. <laughs> it's Renzo Piano, yes, of course. I mean, he designed a bridge without any competition. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, it's another problem in Italy. In Italy, we have two serious problems. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, there is or architect or uh, architect that uh, can't do the project uh, uh, too big uh, because there is a uh, the re um, they they request you a lot of uh, um, experience. And yeah. the other problem is the competition because uh, each time you find yourself competing uh, with uh, uh, more or less 200 participants uh, and this is very frustrating and you understand that in that case it is only luck that can help you to win a competition. When I won the competition in Sora for the school we are 35, it's completely different. And uh, and also in Italy, very often the prizes 
of this competition of the first prize uh, is very low. For the first place, uh, you could receive uh, 10,000 euros, a little bit when abroad, uh, like in Finland, for example, where uh, uh, we have done several competitions, as you mentioned before, for uh, for the South Arbor. Uh, the prize is uh, 60,000 euros. And this permit you also to... Uh, to start really your studio yeah of course and I, I, and that's what i was thinking this is, is this why you also do a lot of in, international competitions especially in um, especially in the S scandinavian yeah. world yes uh, because in finland they are more uh, democratic they permit uh, at, uh, every architect to participate at this competition also, if you are not so experienced architect, uh, it's very international. They use both Finnish and English for the competition. They also have a, a close competition. But in this, in this uh, open uh, competition, it's permit to everyone to compete. Also, the, 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 the new uh, degree. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the, the young. Also, the young, yes. Young it, graduated stimulated me because you can see uh, all the level all the architect not only italian of course um i think it's very interesting what you're doing um and i understand where you're coming from by saying that's a little frustrating um but i'm sure i i'm i can hear also from you that you're uh honestly passionate about what you're doing um, and I also suggest to everybody who are going to listen to this podcast to go on ateliequagliotto.com and check your uh, competition projects because uh, I think what is remarkable, I mean, the projects are very beautiful, of course, uh, but I also very, very much like uh, the way they represent it. And I remember how you uh, told me a few years ago that I should uh, think about how I draw my project and not to do a beautiful rendering because it's a question of a mode. So today might be modern to have a very nice rendering. Tomorrow might be something different. So uh, I really much suggest people to go and visit and um, I wanted to thank you very much for accepting to participate on my podcast, even on a weekend, which was taking time <laughs> off from, from the competitions of you. Thank um, you. You can shout out a little bit also, where can people find Telequaliot uh, on the social media or Instagram, LinkedIn? Do you have these pages? Yes, we have uh, Instagram LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, uh, suggest me if uh, suggest me if uh, there is other uh, mass media. Tick, social. Tick, TikTok. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, TikTok. I, I I can't. I think use. I can't uh, use TikTok. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so I'll put links in the description of all these uh, these uh, pages of Atelier Quagliotto. And really, I suggest everybody to go and visit it because it's very, very beautiful projects. And uh, also, not only visit Atelier Quagliotto, but also visit Instagram at TCI Podcast and LinkedIn, the, the Creative Insider, and the Facebook page, the Creative Insider. So especially all the friends, family of Somewhere, go follow it. <laughs> yes, sure. And um, I promote you. Yeah, and um, so that the point is sharing, so that other people like you will have a bigger voice. They will be heard more. And uh, yeah, it was very nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you to you. Thank you, and uh, best of the luck of the competitions. And uh, if you you win, we'll be sharing it on the pages of the. Okay, thank of, you. And and we can share top ten books liked from from Samuel Coyotto. Okay, 
Okay, bye. we can do that. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Samuel. Bye bye. Thank you too, Georgie. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Just like that.